Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Celebrating Achievements in Entrepreneurial Thought and Action. It's such an exciting way to kick off the Back to Babson weekend with this exciting awards gala, which is always one of our most important and exciting celebrations. An evening in which we recognize alumni entrepreneurs of all kinds who create economic and social value everywhere. It's heartwarming to see so many members of our governance, faculty, staff, students, alumni, and their guests gathered to celebrate entrepreneurs of all kinds. I would like to recognize and thank Joe Wynn, Chair of the Babson Board of Trustees, and Marla Capozzi, our Chair-Elect, for joining us this evening. Thank you so much. I would also like to give a warm welcome to those who are for the first time ever as we live stream this program joining us remotely. I'm delighted also to welcome back some of our former rising stars. Kareem and John, we're so happy to have you here. Welcome back. The collective achievements of our 2017 Alumni Entrepreneur Hall of Fame and Rising Star honorees are remarkable. Their stories and journeys are inspirational. They have pursued their passions, explored ideas, taken action, and built and grown businesses that empower the individuals they serve and simultaneously solve global social issues and create economic value. Tonight's honorees include a family entrepreneur, and five social innovators, two of whom are female co-founders. I like to give it a little clap for that. <laughs> two of the ventures represented by tonight's honorees were founded outside the United States. I am so enthusiastic for you to meet them. But first, a quick thank you to those in our community working so tirelessly in support of our alumni and student entrepreneurs. In particular, Babson's Blank Center for Entrepreneurship, which helps to foster our many alumni and student ventures. Their work is made possible by many great supporters, and tonight we'd like to thank Morgan Lewis, Samuel Goldstein, and Mr. Thomas Gilbane, Jr. And now, let's get rolling. My name is Liam. I'm about to embark on an epic journey. A journey powered solely by kindness. <laughs> Can I live in your house tonight? Unfortunately, I don't have a house. I'm homeless right now. Can I take this blanket here? We want to put you up in a house, enroll you in some kind of certificate program where you can make your way again in life. How does that make you feel? I feel like I'm how do the human race? <laughs> Giving sight to the poor for free, it's beyond words. We will fund 100 surgeries. I need to find a mechanic. I literally haven't eaten in a day. Can I stay with you tonight? Are we there yet? Can I spend the night in your house tonight? Do you speak English? The life of an Indian farmer is not for me. We're missionaries. We would love to offer a place for you to stay tonight. Made it all the way from Hollywood on kindness. Hey, Ari Gandhi. It's true. This is real. It's going to happen. This is like more than a minute. Thank you. They say that giving is better than receiving. And in many ways that's true. Inspired by the 2004 biographical film, The Motorcycle Diaries, a romanticized version of a motorcycle trip that Che Guevara took in his youth, Leon Logothetis transformed his life from London-based broker to global entrepreneur, adventurer, and philanthropist. In his quest to harness the power of the human connection and inspire goodwill, Leon has circumnavigated the globe, visiting more than 90 countries with his yellow motorbike he has called Kindness One, surviving only on the kindness of strangers. 
In each journey, he finds ways to give back to these unsuspecting Good Samaritans in life-changing ways, and he motivates others to be kind. The video you just saw captures just a small glimpse of how Leon is giving hope to those in impoverished communities and inspiring a revolution to do good. Leon has documented his travels in several books, including his most recent publication, Live, Love, Explore, and multiple television series, including The Amazing Adventures of a Nobody, and more recently, my favorite show, The Kindness Diaries. Leon, thank you for role modeling the importance of spreading kindness. You have inspired us to go be kind. To support your effort to donate 10,000 books to the children across the United States, we have placed kindness cards at each table tonight. I hope that many from our Babson community will take time in the coming weeks to share their acts of kindness with you and also encourage their friends and family to do the same. Leon will donate one book for each postcard he receives. These postcards can be mailed directly to Leon or given to anybody here at Babson at any time. By doing good and spreading kindness, we can support Leon in his quest to harness the power of the human connection and to make a difference. Please join me in congratulating entrepreneur, global change maker, 2017 Babson Rising Star, Leon Logothetis. Good evening, everyone. Please feel free to eat your salad and your appetizers. Um, my name is Candy Brush. I'm vice provost here. And I would like to um, say some things about our Beta Challenge and Rising Stars. So in 2016, Beta Challenge undergraduate competition winners Emily Levy, Yusuf Al Hamidi, and Maria Del Mar Gomez are transforming the lives of chronically ill patients. Motivated by a desire to find an alternate option to wearing a cutoff sock on her arm to protect a PIC line intended to treat chronic neurological Lyme disease, Emily recruited a couple of Babson friends to create a more fashionable solution. The dynamic trio leveraged Babson's entrepreneurial thought and action methodology as well as signature Babson Accelerator resources, including the Butler Launchpad, the WinLab, uh, and the WinLab to launch the Pick Perfect, a socially innovative company that improved the quality, the quality of life for chronically ill patients through functional and fashionable pick line covers. Inspired to empower more patients to turn sickness into strength, the team has expanded their product line. Today, Mighty Well creates wearable wellness designing both apparel and accessories that inspire and encourage impatience, their family support networks and their caregivers. The short video that we will, we will show in a minute shows how this team makes a difference to anyone facing a chronic health issue. Mighty Well is on a mission to turn sickness into strength, to help the 133 million Americans and their loved ones have apparel, gear, resources, and community, and letting them know that just because you're sick doesn't mean you have to live a sick life. As patients and caregivers ourselves, we know how uncomfortable it is to be in a hospital gown or how awkward it is to pull out a massive pillbox in public. It's why we started Mighty Well. We create the products we wish we had, functional and stylish apparel and accessories that seamlessly transition from treatment to the classroom to coffee in the city. We believe that patients should be able to go from chemo to Starbucks and no one has to know the difference. We are currently creating a whole line of apparel to help patients with pick lines, ports, feeding tubes, to help them carry around their medication and those with diabetes. 
We wanted to revolutionize the way that patients feel about themselves. And it's all about giving a voice to an unrepresented um, community. We have patients and caregivers all talking to one another, trading advice, trading stories, gaining strength from one another, and at the same time, learning from each other and understanding how better to care for their own family members and patients. That's the real reason why I'm still working as hard as I am on Mighty Well, because I'm helping people and I'm seeing the change that I'm making in their lives. As an individual alone, it is really hard to go through these medical setbacks. But if you have a support and network team around you, that's what makes it a lot easier. We found a new sense of strength, and really, that's each other. Mighty Well is just as much a place for patients as it is for caregivers, siblings, parents, loved ones, healthcare providers. We believe that we're all in this together. We are all friends in the fight. So Emily, Maria, and Yusuf, with your entrepreneurial venture, you have really inspired the Babson community to make a difference. So the college is going to donate 50 Babson branded pick line covers to the Dean Center for Tick-Borne Illnesses at Spalding Rehabilitation Center here in Boston. Along with the pick line covers, we will share personal notes of encouragement. So on behalf of the Mighty Well team, I invite you, the audience, to take a couple of minutes to write a note to one of the chronically ill patients that will accompany these pick line covers and be delivered later this month. So there are some notes on your tables and you may take a few minutes and write those. So Emily, thank you for your courage in leveraging your diagnosis to create an entrepreneurial venture that has the power to heal. Yusef and Maria, thank you for caring so deeply about empowering individuals facing health challenges. And I will just say on a personal note, I've known Emily since she was an undergraduate student here, and it's been my pleasure to watch her grow her business and to celebrate this truly inspirational venture. So please join me in congratulating this mighty trio of social innovators, the 2017 Babson Rising Stars, Emily Levy, Yusef Alhamidi, and Maria Del Mar Gomez. Thank you very much. And congratulations again to the Mighty Well team. So at this time, I'd like to invite you to enjoy your dinner and your conversation. And remember to fill out those little cards. And we'll continue with the awards presentation following this meal. So I hate to break up this wonderful conversation, um, but it's time to move on with the rest of our program. I hope you've all enjoyed your meal, and I now have the pleasure of introducing you to another social innovator. Daniel Dallet, of 2003 graduate, co-founded Solo Coco in his native Dominican Republic. The creation of this venture was truly a family affair. Danny's wife, Gabby, and his father, Enrique, who are here this evening, along with his cousin, Abel Gonzalez, started an agro-industrial production company to improve the lives of all involved in the production chain. Solo Coco, remember that name, produces virgin coconut oil that is made using a cold press technique that is certified fair trade product. Together with his team, Danny succeeded in bringing a truly local, made in the Caribbean, not in Asia, fair trade, extremely low carbon footprint, farm to jar, virgin coconut oil to the US market. In fact, you may have seen Solo Coco at your local Whole Foods or at Volani Farms, and soon you're going to see it across the nation. 
But perhaps the most important and inspiring part of Danny's story is that Solo Coco has created an economic and social value in the Dominican Republic, a country which, where, in which average citizens, the average citizen lives at or below the poverty line with very little education or technical training. Fair Trade certified, Solo Coco exclusively hires single mothers to produce the handcrafted coconut oil, and a portion of the profits are donated to an education fund to support the children of employees. This short video will give you a glimpse of the product, the manufacturing facility, and the team of artisans as they work on their craft. Hola, soy Daniel Dalet, cofundador de Solo Coco. Estamos creando un futuro donde el comercio justo traiga nuevas oportunidades para madres solteras. En República Dominicana existen más de 1.5 millones de madres solteras. Muchas carecen de formación profesional, oportunidades de trabajo digno y progreso social para sus familias. Personalmente, he visto a cientos de estas madres en fila bajo el sol caribeño con la esperanza de romper este círculo vicioso solo con su inmenso deseo de trabajar. Solo Coco es un aceite de coco que da oportunidades de trabajo a estas madres merecedoras, enseñándole la artesanía de un producto de clase mundial. Desde la palma al tarro, es elaborado bajo comercio justo y de manera sustentable. Cada venta de Solo Coco genera fondos para iniciativas de desarrollo social que benefician a nuestras propias artesanas. Así que con tu próxima comida o masaje, puedes ayudar a cambiar vidas. Desde que empezó hace 18 meses, Solo Coco ha vendido 150 mil unidades y ha empleado a más de 60 madres solteras. Nuestras iniciativas de comercio justo han recaudado fondos que beneficiarán la salud y educación de más de 150 familias en este año. Somos Solo Coco. Ayúdanos a expandir nuestra empresa y a empoderar a madres solteras a mejorar la vida de sus familias. So I'd just like to say on a personal note, um, my husband, David, who's here, and I have worked with the Solo Coco team for the past four years, and it has been our privilege to work with such an incredible team. Enrique, Danny, Gabby, the entire team, and Danny, thank you for creating this incredible business. So I want to thank Danny for creating a venture that is really truly social, has creates both social and economic value, something that's very important to us at Babson and all of our students. Um, and all of the while, it's producing a product for all of us to enjoy. So in your honor, Solo Coco oil is the primary ingredient for our dessert tonight. And it is fabulous because we just went back and talked to the chef and Danny had the opportunity to have his picture taken with the chef um, who created this recipe just for tonight. And so I hope you all, So I hope you all enjoy the coconut tres leches cake and I invite you to take a recipe card home which is on the back, and try to make this tasty dessert for your friends and family. So please join me in congratulating social entrepreneur and 2017 rising star, Danny Dallin. So I now have the pleasure in, of, of introducing our president, Carrie Healy, and inviting her to the stage. She's had a very busy day, and so we're very glad that she's here to introduce our Alumni Hall of Fame honoree. Good evening. How are you? 
Wonderful to have you all here tonight. And congratulations again to all of our rising stars. Aren't they incredible? Let's give them another round of applause. So established in 2008, this award uh, celebrates individuals who have distinguished themselves in entrepreneurial endeavors across all types of enterprises and who have created great social and economic value. This year's honoree truly epitomizes entrepreneurial thought and action. He has demonstrated a keen ability to balance creativity and action with a deep understanding of business fundamentals to innovate within a century and a half old company. As the chairman and chief executive officer of the House of Camus, a producer of an international brand of cognac that has been run by five generations of the Camus family since 1863, Cyril Camus' strategic vision and leadership has significantly enhanced Camus' reputation. Since 2003, when he was entrusted with the stewardship of the family business, Cyril has launched several new initiatives to strategically grow the House of Camus and further expand its global reach. Under Cyril's leadership, formal and systematic processes were introduced to improve the quality of the products. New products were created, including the company's signature Borderies XO and the Camus Elegance range and investments were made in employees, including the establishment of a code of ethics, which fueled morale and translated to high performance and exponential growth for the company. At the core of Camus' success and the family's mission is a shared pride in the company, its products, and values that are passed from generation to generation while simultaneously focusing on innovation. Today, Camus Cognac is distributed in more than 140 countries and has received numerous accolades. Camus products have been the most awarded at the International Wine and Spirits Competition for the last five years. For, for the company's exponential growth and subsequent impact on local economic development, Cyril was raised as a Knight of the Legion of Honor by the French government earlier this year. With a firm belief that entrepreneurial family businesses are a great contributor to economic wealth, Cyril became a founding member of the Entrepreneurship Network, or the Enterprising Network, a regional association of company CEOs and owners who help finance, mentor, and assist first-time entrepreneurs the first three years of their ventures. Since its inception in 2005, the association has mentored 73 companies and provided 1.8 million euros in interest-free loans, helping to create 642 local jobs. To this day, 92% of the companies created are still in business, a remarkable story. In addition to his professional and personal accomplishments, Cyril has been a tremendous partner and supporter of Babson. Cyril serves as a global advisory board member and has also assumed the leadership role in revitalizing alumni, alumni activity in France, two significant commitments for which we are all so appreciative. Cyril's dedication to support college events and initiatives, both as a volunteer and with philanthropic contributions, is exemplary. Camus was the top sponsor for Babson Connect Worldwide in 2017, the world's premier entrepreneurship summit. We worked in a, a plug for ourselves in that one there, Cyril. Thank you. Um, we are so grateful to Cyril for his general, generous support of the college and commitment to advancing Babson's mission and global reach. Please join me in welcoming to the stage and congratulating our 2017 Entrepreneur Hall of Fame honoree, Cyril Camus.
Thank you, Kerry. Um, I'm really quite flattered and, and honored um, to, to be here uh, tonight. Uh, also, quite frankly, a little bit surprised. Um, because I think I've told you this before, there is, frankly, it's, it's not that difficult to be good at what I do. Um, in the cognac making business, all you really need is to have had a father, a grandfather, great-grandfather, <laughs> great-great-grandfather who've done it before you. Now, so from, from them, I did get the knowledge and you know, natural cycles of the vineyards, perfect distillation techniques, patience to wait for exactly the right age uh, of the cognac maturing in our cellars, mysterious art of blending, all this. So all this that allows us to make a good cognac. But undeniably, the skills that actually allowed me to take this 150-year-old company and not only maintain it in the family, but actually also grow it as a viable, profitable um, business, those skills, they were definitely from Babson and from Babson only. <laughs> I, to be frank, I don't remember um, in too much detail my classes at Babson. Um, <laughs> it's, um, my time here, I remember, has gone very quickly, and, and it's still a little bit of a blur. And it's not just because of the drinking at the Bezo parties. It was, um, uh, it, it was exciting times, and, and even though I don't remember the details of it, I remember the, the, the confidence at the end of every semester that I had not only acquired knowledge from my teachers, but actually, much more importantly, had, had taken from them actual skills that could be applied to a business right away. And that was amazing. The amazing faculty and the, the actual practicality of the skills we were learning. Um, this is, this is the one, one thing I remember that I find amazing. The fact that Babson was encouraging us to start our own businesses made it even easier to apply those skills right away. Um, I'm so glad to have one of the uh, co-founders of the business we, we started here um, today in, in the room, Lars. Um, having this, this business on campus um, really made the experience here special, and I'm glad that Basson is continuing this, uh, this program. It was also a very practical way to learn that when you talk about entrepreneurial thought in action, when you're 19 years old and totally underfunded, uh, frankly, it's not too many thoughts, but definitely a lot of action required. <laughs> so, when I came here as the fifth generation heir of a, a family business, um, what happened to me is that I definitely lost my sense of entitlement and acquired, instead of it, a taste for achievement. And if this is something that Babson can do to other kids from family businesses, then I think this is indeed an amazing institution. From being back on campus every once in a while, I also keep being amazed by the international diversity of the student body. This is something that is really special to Babson and something I, I cherish and that um, everyone uh, at the Global Advisory Board is very fond of. Um, it is an amazing gift that the school can give all its students to allow them uh, to interact, to learn to work, think, act together with uh, people from so many different cultures and, and nationalities. And f for my personal um, point of view, this is what eventually took me to, to China, this international dimension. I never really quite left China, but the same way, I also never quite left Babson. Um, being from all those MBA student groups that came to, to visit us in, in France and, and China and with whom we would exchange some, some experience, a uh, case study that JP Janet did on, on our market entry in, in China, the Foundations for the Future program that I, I went through with, uh, with my son here, and that actually gave him a taste for, for business, thank you. Um, the involvement in the Global Advisory Board and attending the Babson Connect event, all of this actually has been teaching me more 
and, and ongoing for so many years. I actually think I've probably learned more from Babson um, in those years than, than I did maybe as, um, as a student. Because here as a student, I, I did learn the skills uh, to be an entrepreneur, to, to grow the company. Um, in the years that followed in the involvement with Babson and seeing how Babson has, has grown, I've actually learned how to do it with, with values and, and principles. And to me, the fact that today my company and Camus is a value-driven company, a principled company that focuses not just on creating economic value, but also social and environmental um, value. Um, this is by far my proudest achievement, and, um, and I have Babson to, to thank for this, not just the school, but the whole community of Babson. So I am I'm very proud alumni of the school. I am very grateful to, to the school for what it gave me then and what it's still giving me today. Um, I'm very, very honored once again to be here tonight, and, and thank you very much for this. Cyril, you, in addition to all of your accomplishments, you are also enormously humble. And so thank you for those inspirational words. And now I would like you all, I, I believe you all have on your tables uh, some of Cyril's wonderful cognac. And I would like to raise the toast. Do we not? <laughs> I have Cyril's wonderful <laughs> cognac. <laughs> and now Cyril does too. So um, in addition to everything else uh, Cyril has accomplished and, and the, the great effort that he has made to come here tonight, which would be extraordinary in any event because he spends much of his time in China, what is more extraordinary is that Cyril is leaving here and going directly to Greece to get married on Wednesday. <laughs> to a happy and wonderfully prosperous life together. Cheers. Thank you. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Thank you, and now I think you also will get to enjoy this cognac and enjoy your dessert. Thank you.